I'm leaving the city behind on the lock-heavy Worcester and Birmingham Canal. I'll get stranded in a lock, take in some beautiful Worcestershire countryside, have yet another swan race, do locks, some more locks and yet more locks and then take on the biggest lock flight in the UK. The commandery mentioned in the previous episode is on the right alongside Sidbury Lock, the first of 58 locks. Soon after leaving the city centre, the canal passes through a fairly nondescript area of light industry and housing. Worcester City 2, Liverpool 1. Who'd have thought? Wow, this is a bit of a turn up. I'm stuck in Toledine Lock. Um, as the boat was rising in the lock, I noticed that the pound ahead of me was really low. So, uh, so I got my boat hook out and uh, measured the water level in there, and there was about 18 inches, which obviously wasn't enough for me to um, to uh, exit the lock. So, uh, so I've shot the paddles and. Um, uh, just then a, a CRT guy, in fact the, the nice guy I was chatting to on the Droitwich Canal, um, Graham, he was telling me about the cuckoos. Yeah, and uh, and he's come along and told me apparently someone has uh, um, gone ahead and left paddles open and he's basically drained the pound for this one and the one after. So, um, so uh, and it's going to take about two hours to refill, so um, I'm not sure whether to leave my boat in the lock or just drain it and pull it out backwards um, uh, but first of all I'm just going to have a cup of tea and see what happens. In the end I left Reverie in the lock with the bottom gate open but you can see how low the water level is. An hour later it was okay to move but the water was still low in the pounds. After 16 locks and passing under the motorway, I cruised through the village of Tiberton. It feels good to be in the open countryside again. Well, I think it's fair to say that the Worcester and Birmingham Canal coming out of Worcester is pretty unremarkable really. Uh, there aren't any particularly lovely industrial architecture to look at. The, the countryside is kind of okay but not brilliant, you know. Um, and there's 14 locks. 
but um, once you get the other side of the M5 it's actually really quite pretty here. I've moored for the night in Oddingley which is uh, just beyond the village of Tiberton. Now Tiberton itself was a bit too close to the M5 motorway for my liking um, and uh, I have to say you know even though this is a very pretty place I can still hear the M5 motorway um, but that's okay it's not too intrusive. Uh, there is also the Bristol to Birmingham train line which is uh, just sort of over the hedge <laughs> over that way um, but actually the trains are quite infrequent and uh, and that's not intrusive either so uh, it's forecast to actually really chuck it down with rain all day tomorrow so uh, I shall probably stay here it may have been raining but that isn't an excuse to keep the camera in the bag After a day of rain, it was bright the following morning, and the fishermen and holiday boats were out in force. Plenty of visitor moorings at Dunhampstead, where there's a pub, a canal side cafe and a boatyard. The first of five tunnels on the Worcester and Birmingham. Water way to live, eh? Live in the dream. The canal bisects the charming village of Chernal Green. Oh, here we go, another swan race. This one lasted over two minutes until his poor little legs grew tired. That's it, off you go. Hanbury Wharf Boatyard is in the arm on the left and some sparkling new wide beams are ready for sale. The junction with the Droitwich canals is on the left behind the bridge.
After five and a half miles of lock-free cruising, I reached the Astwood flight at five, taking me up 42 feet. And, fortunately for me, a Lockyer is on hand to help me up the remaining four. It's great when locks have steps. You can let the boat drift into the lock in neutral and pull it back on the centre line. I moored overnight at Stoke Works and was lucky enough to bump into my mate Dell, who had installed my solar. We had a few pints in the boat and railway that night. The area to the right was once the largest salt works in the UK. The canal arm into the works has now been infilled and built on. Droitwich is to become an inland port until the discovery of better brine springs here. These works once accounted for about 50% of the UK salt production. OK, just don't say a word. The CRT barge is reversing to collect materials for lock repairs ahead. And I think this dog wants me to throw his ball. We're just going to open them for you, but it's not empty. I look knackered already, and this is only the second lock of the day. And whilst the boat is rising, I go and set the lock ahead, the one that's due for repair. Now, before I'm pilloried for this, there was nothing to tie my boat to here. I gently nudged the gate and left the boat in gear until the water was level and Rivery then pushed her way into the lock. I moored the night at Stoke Pound.
Now, today's the day for some serious exercise. The tardy big lock flight. The biggest lock flight in the country. 30 locks in total, although there is more in between lock 29 and 30, so I suspect I should probably more there. But fortunately, I've enlisted the help of my lovely son, who I haven't seen since Christmas. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're ready to get knackered. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay, let's do You're it. You're doing the locks, though. Oh, so. cheers. <laughs> right. <laughs> After the 29th lock is the old engine house. This was used to pump water into the top pound of the flight, which is about 15 metres or 50 foot above the feeder reservoir. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Well, that's the tardy big lock flight done. Um, and yeah. It was a big lock flight. It wasn't certainly it? was. We started yeah. off at about 20 to 10 and it's now about half past two. So, um, yeah, uh, absolutely knackering, wasn't it? It, <laughs> it was. It was pretty tiring. Um, um, and uh, the sun is not over the yard arm yet, but I think we've earned these. Absolutely, so. yeah, yeah. It was definitely beer o'clock, yeah. early beer o'clock today. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean. Well, we had our troubles, didn't we? We point. Well, so, we certainly yeah. did. Um, yeah, uh, we've had hailstorms, we've had rainstorms, yeah, yeah. Um, this, <laughs> and, and a bit of sunshine here and there. Lack of water. Um, mm, yeah. yeah, I mean that was that was the main problem. About halfway through the the lock flight, the pounds were down so so much. Um, apparently, uh, I mean I phoned the CRT and they sent someone along to have a look, but apparently uh, someone earlier on today had um, managed to drain four pounds um, and that eventually kind of works it w its way down the flight so uh, yeah between locks 40 and 45 we were we were well not exactly struggling a bit were we but it was it was yeah. a bit concerning at times but yeah um, you yeah. could say we were up shit pound without a paddle you're not allowed to swear on my channel. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bleep that out. <laughs> um, yeah, but it uh, it's, it feels great to have done it. And um, and uh, thanks so much here to, to Top Locky. Quite all right. Yeah. That's quite all right. Cheers, yeah. Top Locky. <laughs> nice to meet you all as well. The last lock of the flight, done the following morning. Thanks so much for watching. Part 2 of the Worcester and Birmingham will be coming soon. I hope you can join me. Take care out there. <laughs>